welcome to this channel if you are new here take some time off to subscribe so that you can see any of our videos anytime we upload please don't forget to turn on the notification bell as you subscribe in this outstanding story we are going to share with you the history and biography of henry j hines the founder of the hj hines company and famous producer of ketchup presently the hj hines company is one of the foremost food processing companies in the world it is said that out of 10 ketchup bottles used in the united states of america six were produced by the heinz company nevertheless the corporation still produces a variety of other products as well mr heinz was characterized with a lot of traits including honesty high output originality and hard work however not only these qualities helped him to become a successful entrepreneur. Henry was also attentive to the product and employees of his company. The ancestors of Henry Heinz lived in Germany and produced wine. His father, John Henry Heinz, was born in Germany. Thus, it was not a big surprise that his father spent his entire childhood in the vineyard. At the age of 19, John Hines went into the military service and when he returned, he decided to move to the United States of America. Many questioned his decision as one which was risky and unnecessary. This was mainly due to the fact that only Germans whose relations lived in the United States of America dared to migrate there. Together with other families, 21-year-old John Hines settled in the territory of German immigrants in a town known as Pittsburgh in the province of Pennsylvania. After some years, Mr. John Hines made it a point to build his brickyard business where he started his operations from. Within these years, John Hines met the love of his life, Anna Margaret Schismith, who was also a German migrant. Anna and John later got married and gave birth to six wonderful children. Henry Heinz was later born on October 11, 1844. In his growing years, he was surrounded by the hard-working family of which he started gaining experience in the area of horticulture. Henry spoke both English and German, since his mother Anna always spoke to Henry in the Deutsch language. At the age of six, he started to help around in the house and the garden. At age nine, Henry secured the recipes of pickles and started selling homemade grated horseradish in the downtown area of Pittsburgh. Henry developed a resilient mindset at a young age and decided to make his business and take it to the next level. At age 10, Henry Hines was gifted a 3,000 square meters of land by his parents. However, at the age of 12, he was the owner of a 12,000 square meters of land with which he started his vegetable farm. Gardening and farming was one of Henry's passions. After some years, Henry started selling his product to a local grocer who sold vegetables and fruits to the residents of Pittsburgh. Henry, being a visionary young man, expanded his business and when he had made strides in the business, he made sure that almost every store in Pittsburgh had one of his products there. Henry's product went on to become the customer's favorite. At the time, Henry J. Hines had graduated from high school. His garden had grown to a magnitude that he had to hire workers. At the age of 17, Henry was making a huge return from his proceeds for a boy of his age. On Henry's greatest day, he said his mother, who was his greatest inspiration, would constantly inspire and support him in instances of failure. She taught Henry everything he knew in business, including communication skills. Also, Anna, being a very religious woman, genuinely expected her son to become a priest. However, Henry was drawn to business than priesthood. This explains Henry's exit from the Lutheran school. Later, Henry enrolled at the Duff's 
Mercantile College, which is one of the top financial American colleges. Henry J. Hines paid for his own education, using money he had gotten over the years through his business. One of Hines' amazing traits was his administrative skills, which made him strict concerning accounting and income. After graduating from Duff's Mercantile College, Henry briefly worked at his father's brickyard corporation where he had learned all the details of business and made some modification in the production of bricks. Suddenly, Henry was very reliable and indispensable as well as a trusted employee of his father. Henry took care of his father's accounting and administration with great zeal. In the year 1864, 20-year-old Henry was leading the race to build a formidable brick factory business which was founded by his father. The brickyard business started bringing in huge returns and Heinz's family soon was able to move from a tiny house to a villa built from the brick's proceeds from the factory. In the year 1869, he married Sarah S. Young, who was a first-generation American whose family was Scots-Irish. In the Methodist church where Henry was attending, he fell in love and decided to marry Sarah immediately after their relationship was approved by his parents. Later, Henry J. Hines and Sarah had four children, three sons, Clarence, Clifford, Howard, and daughter Irene. Henry, being an adventurous human being, was fascinated by the recipes of his mother Anna, of which he continually kept experimenting to improve them. Hines entered into the canned food processing industry with his friend Clarence L. Noble, where he launched a restaurant in a company named Hines & Noble Company in the year 1869. It provided restaurants, cafes, and several businesses with a lot of pickles and homemade products. Henry knew that people did not particularly trust canned products due to the rapid poisoning cases at that time, so Henry decided to put the name of his company on the label. As a smart businessman, he always sent a sample of his product with a fake label and only then, if it succeeded, he put his brand's name on it. The company's revenue reached a few thousand dollars in its year of establishment. To survive in the competitive market, it was necessary not only to provide the customers with high quality product, but also to make the product more accessible. Henry later converted his family house, which left empty after the family had moved out and was renovated for the production of Henry and Noble's product in 1874. Henry hired several German home workers who were engaged in washing and canning the vegetables. Also, during the springtime, Henry and his partner concluded an agreement of acquiring crops at wholesale prices from the local farmers at a fixed price. In doing so, the two partners saved much money since during the adverse weather conditions in the summer and autumn, the cost of vegetables would increase significantly. The company stretched to great success and Henry soon became a wealthy entrepreneur who could support his own family. However, the company would go on to face some challenges in the year 1875 and the US financial crisis erupted resulting in the entire banking system being paralyzed. Farmers applied to the court, resulting in Heinz and Noble's company being destroyed in the process. All the property of the corporation had to be sold in order to compensate for the losses of the farmers. After reading the malicious headline, Trio in a Pickle, in the Pittsburgh Leader newspaper, Clarence Noble said that he did not want to hear a word about any private business again. Henry experienced severe emotional stress and it took him a very long time to recover. Christmas of 1875 was the worst one in his life as he recounts and he could not even afford to buy gifts for his children. Heinz remained depressed and did not get out of bed for several months. At this challenging time, Henry's affable mother helped her son 
both emotionally and financially. She gave Henry all her savings so that he could get back to the business for a second try. An inspired Henry used the money given to him wisely and registered the Heinz Food Company to the names of his relatives, being his mother, cousin and brother John. Continuing to produce and sell sauces and pickles, he was the head of the company, although he was not allowed to manage it by law as his mother owned most of the shares. The Heinz Company became a family business. The relatives even conducted a board meeting in the kitchen during a family dinner. Henry walked on foot to the field daily to check how things were going. Only some time after, when he had saved a little money, Henry was able to buy a horse which was affordable for the business at that time. Henry's rise to success was not an easy one as he had to start not only from scratch but with the repayment of his debt. Henry worked hard and made sure that he, the Henry Heinz Food Company should have its own land to control an entire cycle of production starting with the burden of seedling and ending with the delivery of preserved vegetable into the trading scope. 1876, Henry mastered the art of production of tomato sauce which was later called ketchup. Henry's mother, who came from Bohemia, knew how to make a delicious tomato sauce and this was the recipe which became the formula for most popular ketchup brands nowadays. The tomato sauce which was made from fresh tomatoes grown by Henry in the fields of Pennsylvania, great success. At the time of the economic crisis, when Heinz owed a considerable amount of money to the Pittsburgh farmers and grocers, he managed to pay every last amount of money owed them, even though the government did not allow bankrupts to do so. His revenue started increasing significantly, an honest Henry gradually started paying back his debts and it took him five years to clear them all. Only after this, Henry Heinz became a legal owner of the company, moving its headquarters to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, USA. Henry tried to make the quality of his product as high as possible. To do so, he was organizing various systems, controlling the quality and introducing new technologies as well as continually experimenting with the packaging. Henry J. Hines believed that the way the bottling was made was not important as the product's image. He noticed that the customers were not trusting the canned fruit in the opaque jars. Henry then started producing his product in transparent bottles, which made the company a great success. Today, Henry J. Hines Company employs about 32,000 employees and factory workers worldwide. The company's revenue was about $11.64 billion in 2012. Henry J. Heinz Ketchup is presently one of the best ketchup businesses in the world. Henry once said that as I did not become a priest, I have found another way to do good to mankind. Today, we can say surely Henry is one of the greatest entrepreneurs ever to be discovered on earth. The company's revenue as at 2021 was $26.04 billion. Henry worshipped with Methodist and Presbyterian churches and closely worked with Baptist churches as well. When Heinz visited England, one of his tourist stops included the graves of religious leaders such as Isaac Watts and John Wesley. At the beginning of Heinz's will, he wrote, I desire to set forth at the beginning of this will as the most important item in it, a confession of my faith in Jesus Christ as my Savior. Henry Hines suffered and died from pneumonia at the age of 74. His employees raised money and put up a monument which can still be found in the main building of his company till today.